All right. Well, welcome everyone to our Admissions 101 webinar. Uh, my name is Mai Choi and I serve as our Director of Admissions here. Um, joining me tonight is Mr. David Dwyer, our Admissions Counselor. Um, a few items of housekeeping and business before our um, webinar truly begins. Uh, first and foremost, welcome. We're so glad that you took the time to attend tonight. Um, this is a webinar, so it's a little bit of a different format than maybe your usual open forum or Zoom meetings where you might be able to see other attendees. Um, but uh, tonight, you will still have the capability to um, see our presentation. Um, we are recording this to be able to be viewed at a later time. In addition to that, um, throughout the time, um, you should have the ability to ask uh, questions um, in the Q&A uh, section at the bottom of your webinar screens. And so throughout our time and throughout our um, webinar tonight as we present information. Please be sure to submit your questions to us using the Q&A box um, at the bottom of your Zoom webinar screens. Uh, Mr. Dwyer and I are both um, here uh, at Faith Lutheran uh, Middle School and High School in the admissions office. Um, we're so excited to partner with you as we open our admissions season here. Uh, let's see here. And before we begin, I just stall in a little bit, making sure we're giving some time for folks to still get logged in. Um, we again want to make sure we use the Q&A box tonight um, and uh, feel free to take notes, but um, we can also want to do a reminder that all this information is available on our school's website um, as we move along as well. Let's see here. And Mr. Dwyer, I just want to double check. Do you see the Q&A box below? Do you think it's working for you on your end? Yes, I do see it below. And it does not appear as though we have any open questions at this time. Perfect. That's OK. Um, and just want to make sure it's working. Well, I think we'll go ahead and begin. Um, I'll first start out by uh, sharing a quick presentation. Um, we'll go over tonight the admissions season and just the general timeline for admissions applications here at Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School. Um, and we will also go over a few tips and tricks um, and also uh, cover a little bit about admissions events and um, close our time with, again, that general Q&A if we see any questions roll in, All right? Um, before we begin, I also want to do a brief um, just a brief introduction about the school. Um, Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School, uh, we are indeed middle school and high school. This is a sixth through 12th grade. Uh, many folks here in Las Vegas might um, consider us um, connected with some of the other Lutheran feeder schools in town. We are indeed. Um, we are connected with the same uh, church body and church network. Um, and they are indeed Lutheran feeder schools to our school. But we start here as an independent middle school and high school where students even from our Lutheran feeder schools will apply just like students from all across the valley here. Um, right now, today, we sit at just about 2,000 students here, um, and we serve, um, uh, again, yeah, about, just about 2,000 students um, with our faculty and staff of about 200. Um, our campus sits in the beautiful Summerlin area, and um, we have uh, wonderful activities when it comes to fine arts, athletics, and other extracurriculars. All of those things you can learn about more on our school website. Tonight, we're going to focus on the application. Um, but I wanted to give that brief introduction um, uh, before we start. Let me share my screen, and we'll dive right in to the admissions information. And so I hope we can see our screen OK. I think so. Um, and so Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School um, here in the admissions office, uh, we have three lovely folks here that uh, will be able to serve you and your families this year. Um, our office is here to help. Um, we are in a position of service. Um, this admissions application process should be one uh, that is fairly peaceful and that um, I, I would hate for anyone to feel nervous or, or scared as they're applying. We're here to help you and hopefully to ease those anxieties and stresses that come with applying to a new school. Um, yes, we are a private school. Yes, there's an application process, but that truly the heart of that for us is to help get to know you better um, as a student, get to know your student better and to get to know your family better. 
um, ultimately this is a partnership. Um, our Faith Lutheran Admissions team consists of three people. Again, my name is Mai Choi and I serve as our Director of Admissions. I've been here at Faith Lutheran since 2017. Um, I have my partner in crime here, Mr. David Dwyer, who's our awesome admissions counselor. Uh, Mr. Dwyer joined us uh, just last year and we have our awesome admissions assistant, Mrs. Hannah Smith. Uh, between the three of us, we are here to help you. Um, a little bit about our roles. Um, as a family that's applying, uh, you will mainly be working with uh, Mr. Dwyer and Mrs. Hannah Smith as you're working through your application. And of course, um, if they're not available, I'm here to help as well. But the majority of your emails and communication will be coming from Mr. Dwyer and Mrs. Smith um, throughout your application process. Um, and so we are happy to help you all. Uh, okay, moving forward, oops. It'd be good if our presentation, there we go. Um, our application's open today. Um, our application's open today, September 15th. And uh, for families that are excited and ready to go, it is there and available for you to submit. Um, for the month of September through the month of October, October 31st, we will offer the application for free. And the fee that is normally associated is waived for that time. Um, starting November 1st, that Monday morning when we get into work, I'm going to turn off that fee waiver and uh, it'll be a $50 application fee. However, until then, um, please, please, please start your application and submit it to be able to take advantage of the free application. Encourage all of your friends as well, even if they're wondering, should I apply, should I not? Start the application and you'll have that $50 application waived. Um, we're really encouraging families to get started early this year because our goal is that we're able to wrap up the admissions process for you um, by mid-February. Um, that way, um, you know your admissions decision before you have to think about certain things like maybe re-enrollment or as you're hearing back from other schools in the Valley. Uh, we here at Faith Lutheran understand that families have a lot of great schools to choose from and it's, it's pretty normal to apply to various schools as you're looking at high schools especially. Um, and most of us here in the Valley um, we, we try to release our admissions decisions by that mid-February time. Um, we work closely together. Um, my, uh, for example, I communicate regularly with the admissions director at Bishop Horman, and we try to align ourselves to make sure that we're making your lives easier and not harder when it comes to applying to schools. To us, it's about fit and finding the right fit when it comes to high school. Of course, we're a little biased. We left ourselves here at Faith Lutheran Middle School High School, but we understand that every kid is different. So. Admissions timeline as we kind of go through that. Uh, in the months uh, from September to November, a family's main focus is to submit the application, turn in supporting documents, request those recommendation forms that are required for the application, and really working on finishing what we call the admissions checklist. Um, the admissions checklist, is a, uh, which I'll show you in a second, is the way to help keep track of what you need to turn in. Everything we ask for here at Faith Lutheran helps us get to know your child better. And especially with everything happening in our world right now with um, school being so all over the place the past few years with COVID and the pandemic, we really are trying to get to know the student academically. Um, and we're asking for a little bit of a history when it comes to your child's grades. We wanna see this year what your child's grades look like before the pandemic during as maybe your child went through hybrid and other forms of school mm -hmm. and then post that um, meaning this past year and so that's why we're asking for a little bit more as you'll see as you dive into the admissions process um, in addition to that we ask for letters of recommendation and so our students um, get the ability to uh, be bragged about by their awesome teachers and administrators. And we love hearing about all the awesome things about your kids and getting to know them better. Um, anyway, so during the months of September, October, and November, it's really going to be focusing on completing your checklist, turning in those documents that you need, and, and working through that. Um, we hope that the family will be able to turn in all of their uh, supporting documents and have recommendations submitted by December 31st. If you're able to do that, um, you will be able to have what we call a wrap-up interview in the month of January. 
The wrap up interview, um, that is our way just to tie a bow on everything. Um, we use that time to allow the families to ask any follow up questions they might have regarding um, the school itself. Um, we use that time to ask clarification questions if we have any questions based on what we saw in a student's application. Um, we also use that wrap up interview to allow your student to speak for themselves to let us know who they are and what they're interested in and what they're excited about when it comes to our school and how they wanna get involved if they're able to attend. And so January is your time for that wrap up interview. And then in February is our hope, uh, probably around mid-February is when we'll um, start giving out those initial admissions decisions. Um, we believe that if a family follows this initial priority application timeline um, and you wrap up by February, there is still space available in our grades. We do not build waiting lists ahead of time. Let's say a family's been signed up since kindergarten, right? We start the application over every year to allow all families to apply. Um, this past year, we really filled up as a school, um, I would say by May, um, early June. And so to avoid the possibility of being placed in a waiting pool, you really want to follow this timeline that we've outlined here, starting now just by submitting the application, turning in documents throughout the fall, and then wrapping up by February with the whole admissions process. All right. Um, Mr. Dwyer, do you see any questions so far at all? By any chance? No, there has not been any. Oh, one just popped in, so I'll take a look at that and I will bring it up in chat shortly. Okay, awesome. Well, as we continue on, let me just show you real quickly um, what our uh, how to access the application. And so, um, our application can be found on our school's website, which is faithlutheranlv.org. Um, faithlutheranlv.org has a lot of great information on it. Of course, our admissions pages are there, but you also can find a ton of information about our school, our programs, the athletics, our fine arts, our student life. We list all the clubs and organizations we offer. We also list our entire curriculum guide so families can see exactly all of the classes that we offer in both middle school and high school. A fun fact is that we actually offer over 190 different courses uh, in our high school that students can choose from and build their schedule from. It's incredible. So when you go to faithlutheranlv.org, uh, you can click on the top there, admissions, and you'll be able to get to something called the new student admissions page. Um, on the new student admissions page there, um, that will allow you to access the different applications and to be able to see outlined step by step what the process is. I apologize because I'm actually using an old screenshot here of our um, process a few years ago, but it looks generally the same. You'll be able to see the admissions process for middle school, the admissions process for high school, and see exactly step by step what that looks like and what you're required to turn in. And again, a reminder of when the deadlines are. Um, you start by creating an account um, in what we call Crusader Connect. Crusader Connect is our applications portal and our application portal actually then turns into your future parent portal should you be accepted and enrolled at the school. But anyway, this admissions portal hopefully makes your lives easier by allowing you to access the application, the checklist, and to be able to upload all the required documents and paperwork that you need from the comfort of your own home, or even from your phone, um, from a laptop, from an iPad, this hopefully makes your lives easier. Long gone are the days when you're faxing us paperwork, when you're bringing in hard copies, um, you can do it straight from home and it gets to us uh, via um, our application portal. And so you're gonna hear us say Crusader Connect, Crusader Connect a lot. So you start the application process by creating your Crusader Connect profile. And once you do that, you'll actually be able to have a parent portal here, an application portal, and your child's name will be listed up in the top left, your name in the top right, and um, you'll be able to click on your child's name or multiple children if you're applying multiple kids, um, and every child then will receive a checklist. This checklist, again, is meant to help guide you as you go through the application process. And again, I apologize, this is an old screenshot of a, of a former checklist, but it gives you the gist of it where you'll see step-by-step step what you need to turn in. Um, we even allow you to have boxes to then upload the various documents that you're gonna be required to, to send in. Um, and you're able to send the request 
for recommendations straight from your checklist. Um, you don't have to email your teacher separately or print out a form to hand into them that they mail to us. No, all you have to do is work through the checklist. You need their name and email. And from there, it will send them a direct link that comes directly back to us. Again, super easy, trying to make things as seamless as possible for you. Um, in addition to that, as you work through your checklist, you'll see that um, it will be live and it will update you on what's been turned in, what's been processed by our office. A little hint here is that as you work through, you'll see these blue check marks on the left side of your checklist start to get filled in. And you'll know that when that thing is blue, we in the admissions office has processed the document that you've uploaded. And so you'll know you've completed that step when you see that blue check mark along your checklist as you go. So I hope that this can be a really helpful tool for you as you apply. Um, and of course, again, this is the electronic automatic thing to help you. Mr. Dreyer, Mr. Smith, uh, myself, we are here to also receive your calls and emails in regards to your checklist as well. All right, um, I get a lot of um, sometimes worries or questions about the interview, so I want to circle back around to that. The admissions interview, again, for Faith Lutheran is a get to know you and a wrap up protocol. And so we like to use this interview, again, to really get to know your student, allow them to speak to what they're interested in, what they're about. I ask fun questions like, tell me three things about yourself that you want everyone to know. Um, what's your favorite activity to do outside of school? Um, tell me about your family. Tell me about your siblings. Um, what do you do to have fun together? And that's our way to get to know your student better. Again, the interview is also a way for us to um, ask any wrap up questions that you have as a family and for us to be able to answer anything that you are concerned about or worried about. Um, this is a quick 20 minute thing. We do it over Zoom. Um, and so it's a, it's a, you know, a video interview. And so again, that can be done from the comfort of your home. We've had families that have kind of busy schedules where, you know, after picking up from school, they park the car real quick and make sure everyone is ready to go and situate and concentrated. But we've had families that have done it on the go. We want this interview to be a time for us to wrap up the admissions process for you. And so again, hopefully it's not something that students feel concerned about, but that they feel like it's a time for them to really, you know, ask their questions and, and to help us get to know them better. Mr. Ray, I see your hand raised. Did you have something to add with that? <laughs> yes, I had a couple of questions come in through the Q&A chat. So I wanted to bring that to your attention for us to discuss here. Um, the questions I seem to be getting the most through here are with regards to um, recommendations. So I wasn't sure if we have that here later or if we wanted to touch on that since that is something we do request prior to the interview step. Let's do um, that but, now. No, let's let's talk about recommendations now since it's on our minds. Um, what perfect. are some questions? Um, so two common themes with the recommendations. Um, one, what type of recommendations are we going to request? Um, and two, what about schools that are notoriously difficult or uncomfortable situations to request for uh, recommendations? Ah, um, so, so let's talk about the types of recommendations. Um, we can. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of an easy way. Well, let's just talk about it. There are three uh, types of recommendations that we usually uh, request. The first is an English teacher recommendation. We would like to know some information from your child's English or ELA teacher, um, just about their work habits in the classroom. And we ask for specifically the English ELA teacher because they can also speak to your students writing and reading comprehension skills and reading levels. Um, reading levels is more of a middle school thing, but again, in high school, we want to know how they are as a writer um, and how their skills are there. And so that's the first is the teacher recommendation specifically from an English or English language arts teacher. The second type of recommendation that we have families um, request is one from an, an administrator. And so the administrator, um, that can be different for anyone at school, but who we are looking for is um, a, a principal, assistant principal, dean of students, counselor, or head of school, someone in the administration that has access to maybe a student file that can look up behavior records, attendance, and if the case comes up that if there was, let's say, a disciplinary issue, they would be the ones handling it and be privy to that information. Um, and so that's why we ask for an administrative recommendation as well as a teacher recommendation. The administrative one will focus on behavior and character um, and general just school um, things. The teacher really focuses on the student in the classroom. 
The third type of recommendation that we have is a character recommendation. Um, that is an optional recommendation for you as a family to provide to us, um, unless uh, we have a little some caveats to that which we can cover but the character recommendation a lot of times i have families that say we have a great coach a mentor a tutor um, that just you know they, they know our student better than, than than the principal would can we can we have them fill it out instead well instead of the instead we have you do it on top of right and so the administrative and teacher recommendation those are required but if you really want someone else that knows your student really well, like a coach or a pastor or um, a tutor or someone like that, they can fill out what's called a character reference. And again, that can help us further get to know your student. Uh, Mr. Rye, I think the second part of that question was schools that maybe aren't as um, open to giving recommendations, right? Yes. Awesome. So we do have some schools in town that are for profit schools that it is written in their school policy that they don't allow um, their teachers and administrators to fill out recommendations. And, and it's mainly our for profit schools. So we're talking schools like Challenger, Mary Hill, um, Southern Highlands. Um, they're, they, those teachers, it's not their fault, right? They, their school and company's policies, they're not allowed to. And so in lieu of that, we're gonna definitely lean heavily on the character recommendation. We have good relationships with those schools. Well, I will call up Principal Roberts. I will call up Mrs. Johnson. Um, I will call them up um, to kind of get the administrative, um, but maybe over the phone instead of having her fill out a form. And then in lieu of the teacher, most of those schools, um, we will be able to gather teacher comments about your students' experience in the classroom through your report card and uh, or transcripts. And so many times uh, teachers will write comments on the uh, report card. And so for the schools in town specifically that the teachers are barred from, they're not allowed to fill out our recommendations, we will make that exception. Now for all the other schools in town, like our public CCSD schools, um, our Lutheran feeder schools, uh, many of our private schools in town, the regular administrative recommendation and teacher recommendation should be sent and filled out. And, and there's no exception to that. Okay, uh, but if you're still concerned about that, that is a great opportunity to send us an email and we can talk about that individually with your family. Yeah, um, any more questions, Mr. Dwyer, about the application itself? Um, I'm handling those. Most of these uh, questions so far have been in regards to recommendations. So I'm going to let a couple more come in um, and I'll interject with some more uh, questions here. Awesome. Well, I'm going to keep going here. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is enrollment. Um, after the entire admissions process is completed, meaning you've turned everything in, you've done your interview, we've given your student a positive admissions decision, and you've been accepted to the school. A lot of times families want to dive in already, even in the beginning of this process and say, well, what will I owe then? <laughs> what, how do I get involved in the school? How do I get official, right? And so here's some information about our enrollment. At the end of the process, if your student is granted an acceptance to the school, and we have space available because you've applied on time, and, and you've worked your way through that application process, there is an enrollment fee to officially enroll your student into the school. That fee is $1,000. Um, and that fee, that $1,000 is divided into two parts. 500 of that thousand is an enrollment and registration fee. The other 500 is what we call an activity fee. Those activity fees are outlined on our school website and what the breakdown is, especially um, on our financial aid and tuition pages. And uh, it's in writing exactly what those break down to. But anyway, to be officially enrolled in the school, meaning your student is enrolled, they will receive a student schedule, they will start with us in the fall, it's $1,000. Um, we also have our tuition already um, for the following school year. Uh, next year, our tuition is $13,875 for the entire year. Um, our tuition can be handled uh, in various ways. Uh, families sometimes pay in full. Sometimes families opt for paying in two payments, one each semester. Other families will opt for our monthly payment plan. Um, there's no discount on paying in full, and there's no interest on families that would like to pay monthly. It's just whatever works best for your family. Um, in addition to our um, tuition, we, of course, offer financial aid um, and the opportunity ap to apply for need-based financial aid. Um, this is uh, for families that um, will apply for the tuition 
um, assistance, and it's going to be based on household income. And so that's what the need-based portion of that is about. Basically, families starting July, uh, January, excuse me, January 1st, will be allowed to submit a financial aid application. That application will be reviewed um, and in four weeks time, you'll be able to receive a, um, an award amount and uh, an answer from our financial aid office in regards to how much that financial aid package can be to help offset the cost of our tuition. Financial aid is not something you pay back. It's something that, again, um, is given to the family. We do ask families that receive financial aid to um, do service hours to the school. And so, for example, a family that maybe got awarded $4,000 this year will do about 65 hours of, um, of, of service hours at the school. And so there is um, some of those um, rules that come with financial aid. Um, and then um, our financial aid packages typically cover 30 to 35% of, um, of need. And so, for example, this year, you know, unfortunately, that, that number isn't 100%, um, but our largest financial aid package this year was about $5,000. And that's for a family that expressed 100% need, um, and so they were able to offset the cost of tuition with that. In addition to our own financial aid program at the school with Faith Lutheran, we also accept what's called the Nevada Choice Opportunity Scholarships. I'm so happy um, that this year, this fall, right before school started, um, Nevada, Nevadans were able to apply for these scholarships. Information about the Nevada Choice Scholarships can be found uh, on the Department of Ed Education website. It can also be found if you Google Nevada Choice Scholarships. Um, and there's a great nonprofit called the Nevada School Choice Coalition that gives a lot of great information about this. I would like to be clear that the Nevada Choice Scholarships are not offered through Faith Lutheran, but by outside organizations that uh, award students money. And again, they're need-based. Um, the other thing I'd like to clarify is that Faith Lutheran does not offer merit or athletic or fine arts scholarships. That is not something we do. Athletic scholarships are not allowed. We do not, we do, not do that. <laughs> and so many times I get families and say, my, my student's an amazing athlete. They have a 4.0 GPA, they're great. Are there any scholarships for them? And I say, unfortunately not, but let me tell you information about our need-based aid. Um, and so just to be clear, we offer financial aid, we accept funds from the Nevada Choice Scholarship, and we do not offer merit or athletic or fine arts scholarships. Um, I wanna pause there, Ms. Rudd, because I know sometimes we get questions about financial aid. Anything that you see there in our chats? Uh, nothing with respect to financial aid yet at the moment. So everything has been kind of a uh, soft follow-up to the recommendations so far. So we're good to continue. All right. Okay. Well, then I want to dive in really quickly and talk about campus tours, events, and shadow days. Um, and so we have a myriad of ways to visit our campus and to explore the school and to meet students. Um, and with COVID, we've had to make some restructuring and things. And so, uh, but we think we're offering a lot of great ways to do this. Um, campus tours on our school website on our admissions pages you'll have the ability to register for campus tours and we have those starting October 1st and they'll run throughout the entire fall we'll probably pause a bit for the months of January and February and those campus tours will then restart uh, starting in in March. Um, in addition to weekly campus tours, um, and, and those, by the way, are group campus tours. We allow uh, four families on each tour. If they, we offer one uh, a week that's during the school day, one a week that's after the school day. Um, and so anyway, those campus tours are available uh, to sign up and register for. We use Calendly for those, and so you'll find the signups on our school website. In addition to campus tours, we have our wonderful events. Um, what you'll see on our website is the opportunity to sign up to come to our mini open houses. Um, these are Explore Faith um, mini open houses, and they're offered on Saturdays this year. We will have one Explore Faith open house event uh, one Saturday a month, um, September, October, November, as well as in March, April, and May, I think. I'm, I'm second guessing myself, but I really should have put up these dates on our, 
on our slideshow here. Um, but anyway, these Explore Faith events are an awesome way to come see campus on a Saturday. It's a two hour event where you will be able to go at your leisure and walk amongst the halls, um, get your eyes on classrooms. And we'll also have our wonderful student ambassadors there available to give mini tours as well as speak to the student experience. Um, during our Explore Faith times, we might have some hands-on activities. Uh, we'll probably have some of our music departments um, perform. And so it's just a great way to see the campus again on a Saturday morning, um, just a quick way to stop by. Lastly, I know a lot of families are interested in shadow days. At the moment, um, because of COVID and our COVID protocols of classroom and um, assigned seating, um, we've really kept our shadow days to a minimum actually close to non-existent for the fall. Until we find that maybe um, our mandates are lifted just a little bit more and we're allowed to have a few more students um, and more bodies in the classrooms, um, we tend, right now, we don't wanna overwhelm our teachers with some extra bodies. Um, for our high school students, um, your school um, will, uh, certain schools um, are arranging shadow days um, with our office. And so if you feel like there's a lot of different eighth graders in your class interested in Faith Lutheran, have your school reach out to us and we'll be able to plan a specific shadow day for you. For example, right now, Alexander Dawson has had uh, it put an eighth grade shadow day on the calendar, as well as Cornerstone Christian. Um, I think uh, we're in the talks with Las Vegas Day School in regards to providing that. Um, but if other schools are interested, please make sure your school administrator reaches out to us and we'd be happy to plan that. For my fifth grade families, we have an awesome event coming up in October called Future Crusader Day that you'll also be able to find on our events calendar very soon. And that day um, will be a day for fifth graders from across the valley to come and have an on-campus experience as well. It's not going to be like your typical shadow day, but on that day, fifth graders from across the valley will be paired in groups with other fifth graders that are applying. Um, they'll have a student ambassador leading them around campus and will rotate amongst different stations to help them learn about the classroom, about athletics, fine arts, and so on and so forth. And so please check our website for all information about campus tours, events, and shadow days. I will say uh, we are still updating some things. And so if you don't see them this week, make sure to continue checking back um, as we go throughout the admissions season. All right, I'm going to keep going here or is that my last slide? Oh, this is my last slide. Um, ultimately, we hope that um, this little bit of information is truly, we know, just scratching the surface. Um, I want you to know that our office, it's not an emergency but we are happy to help. And so I want you to feel that if you have a question, please, please, please reach out to us. And um, please make sure to um, call us, email us, and um, to leave a voicemail if you do indeed call. <laughs> uh, voicemails are, are important. Um, we get um, close to you know, 20 to 30 calls a day. Um, and if you don't leave a voicemail, it's hard for us to make sure that we're calling you back and following up with you. And so please leave a voicemail if you call and we happen to miss your call. Emails are great as well. You have um, our emails available, but the main school email address is admissions at flhsemail.org. Um, and so again, but that information is on our school website, um, admissions at flhsemail.org. And so Mr. Dwyer, I think that's the main part that I wanna make sure we present here to families. Um, but what I want to do is I'm, I know that you're working on the chat box here. Do you see any um, questions here that we can address with everybody? How many activities? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so a couple of good questions for you. Um, so I'll pose it and let you answer here. Mm -hmm. um, first one is in regards to future Crusader Day. Um, first question was, do parents attend? Um, so I guess more, if you'd like to provide a little more context of what Future Crusader Day is for fifth graders. Absolutely. Um, Future Crusader Day, along with, um, if we happen to have a high school um, shadow day with let's say a school like, a, like Alexander Dawson, for example, coming or Cornerstone Christian, um, those days, the students will be experiencing them uh, mainly. And what we do is, unfortunately, you know, we won't allow the parent to kind of go along with them with their different activities, but we will offer um, at the end of the event, a, a campus tour for, for, the, for the parents. Um, and so, or, or possibly at the beginning, it just depends on the event itself. But for future Crusader Day, um, the students will come and attend the event, uh, but then the campus tours off, will be offered at the end of future Crusader Day specifically. 
Yeah, but so parents, I'm so sorry. We we want this event to be mainly focused on the kids and allow the kids to kind of have almost like a what would it feel like to be a sixth grader for the day, right? And they'll they'll be running around the campus um, and, and experiencing that on their own. <laughs> of course. So uh, great question though. More questions. I see um, perfect. Here, but, yeah, yeah, sorry. I was I was working on answering that one uh, privately. So I was going to send her just a little bit more specific information. Um, a couple questions as far as activities are concerned, some of our student teacher to ratios. Um, so I guess more of just the fast facts about Faith Lutheran, if you want to provide those. Sure thing. Let's talk about that. So our fast facts here at Faith Lutheran, um, this year our average class sizes, even with how many students we have enrolled, um, I'll break down the numbers again. Uh, we started the school year with just over 2,000 students. Um, that was broken down by about almost 800 students in our middle school and just around 1,200 students in our high school, um, 9th through 12th grade. Uh, we have about 200, uh, 200 full-time faculty and staff here. And so when you just talk purely numbers, adult to uh, student ratio, we're about 18 to 1. When you're talking about in the classroom student to teacher ratio, we're about 23 students on average in the classroom. Now, again, that's an average. And so um, we find that in the high school, our largest class will have 29 students in it. Um, unless it's like a PE class, it can be a little bit bigger or like a weights class. But still your, your average class is 23 students per, per classroom. The highest we'll let a high school class go is 29 students. We cap our sixth grade classes this year at 25. And we are really capping our seventh and eighth grade, eighth grade classes around 26 to 27 kids per class at the max. But that's very rare, right? Our average is still, with all the classes offered um, and all the students, 23 students uh, on average. Um, students at our school, Mr. Dwyer asked about activities. A big part about being a student at Faith Lutheran is getting involved. And so we offer a lot when it comes to extracurriculars and all these events that you'll be able to attend this year from our Explore Faith events. I'll even give a little heads up that in November, we'll do a high school academics night. Um, we'll do um, some more webinars throughout the fall highlighting the fine arts and athletics. Anyway, there's a lot to do here at Faith Lutheran. And so one of the things that um, you know, we look for in an applicant is how do you wanna get involved? Uh, what do you want to do when you're at Faith Lutheran? How do you want to contribute back to the community? How do you want to um, get involved and explore what you're passionate about and grow your gifts and talents? And so we offer a lot. There are over 50 clubs and organizations um, here for the students to sign up for, try out for, be a part of. Um, just yesterday afternoon um, at 4.45, I went out to the hall real quick and school is well over by this point. But all of a sudden, all these students came streaming out of classrooms. And I was like, what were you doing here? Oh, I was doing a role playing club, RPG. Oh, we were part of Cupcake Club and we just had our monthly competition. Oh, I'm going to volleyball practice right now. Oh, you know, tonight I'm going to this game. Uh, and so there's a lot to do. Parents, you can actually um, access our student opportunities list on our website. And you know what, why don't I, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull that up for our parents to be able to see here. Um, the student opportunities list is ebbing and flowing, always changing, but it can give you a really great snapshot of what we have to offer. So I'm going to share my screen real briefly here. All right. So our school website, again, we're here, faithlutheranlv.org. Um, and our website here at the top, you can click on student life. And under student life, you can click on student opportunities. And here under student opportunities, you'll be able to see all the co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Um, the difference between co-curricular and extracurricular. Uh, co-curricular means that it's offered during the school day as an elective, as well as after school. A good example of this is robotics club. Um, robotics club, robotics is offered in both middle school and high school. Our robotics teams are extremely um, involved and extremely successful uh, in both local, regional, state, and world competitions. But robotics is offered not only as a, um, a class, but also as an after-school club. And so students, you can see here, Vex Robotics High School Club, Vex Robotics Middle School, and look at this, now, now I feel kind of silly, but they say in process. They're definitely happening, but the, the teachers are updating the pages. Anyway, the students can do those during school or after school. Some of our extracurriculars are truly just after school. For example, uh, let's see here, uh, Video Production Club, AV. These students meet after school once a week and it's open to all middle school students. 
Um, let's see here. The Table Tennis Club, Ping Pong Club, open to students after school. Um, and so please take a chance to look through this wonderful list and you'll see all that we have to offer. Since I'm on this page, I think I'll take a brief moment to show you also when I was talking about the curriculum guide, academics here is a great place to explore to learn about our curriculum. I think a strength of Faith Lutheran is in our curriculum and all the things that we offer from regular college preparatory classes to advanced classes in both middle school and high school, advanced classes in middle school and then honors and AP classes in the high school. Um, our middle school here, you can explore the curriculum and select by department. A huge strength of ours is in our electives for the middle school. And so you can see here seventh and eighth grade electives. We offer a list of, I, I gotta say, I think over 30 different electives students can have the option of choosing. Um, in the high school here, again, the curriculum is 190 classes large. And so you'll be able to break it down by different um, uh, subjects or uh, for example, core subjects such as science. Yes, you have your regular biology and chemistry, but you also have all these other crazy options like molecular genetics when you get to high school. Um, in the high school, we also have incredibly unique extracurriculars. For example, we have our flight program here at the school, um, as well as our uh, wonderful fine arts opportunities, um, great electives in computer science and uh, journalism, as well as justice and advocacy. I would say while you're on the academic pages, please check out our counseling page. We have seven full-time counselors here at the school. Um, some aren't listed here, but we do an incredible job of meeting students' uh, academic needs as well as social and emotional needs. In addition to regular college, uh, regular counseling, we offer college counseling as well. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, Mr. Dwyer. More questions. What else are things that are people asking about here? So one common question I see, and I was going to save this for the end, but I think this is a good time to just remind people as well, is uh, what's next or how do we get started? Um, and so that question is rather simple. Once you're done, if you're ready to apply, feel free to head to our website, www.faithlutheranlv.org, and submit an application under our our admissions tab. We have everything spelled out for you there. Like Mai said at the very beginning of this, um, we've done our best to outline all of the information you guys are going to need throughout the website. Um, and so that's where you'll get started as well with creating a Crusader Connect account. Absolutely. Yeah, so long story short, you can get started tonight. The first thing you'll do is you create that portal again and submit your application. And after one or two business days, we'll get back to you and provide you that checklist. And we'll just work together from now all the way into December, into January, into February. Uh, let's think of the application process as a little bit of a marathon versus a sprint. Um, but we do it that way because we want to allow families the space and time to do this again as at your leisure, right? So a good pace would be September, submit the application, get a hold of your checklist, lay of the land. October, Let's go ahead and submit some of those documents you might have at home, like your birth certificate and maybe last year's standardized test scores. Um, then uh, November, request those recommendations. And by then you might have a first quarter report card. Upload that first quarter report card in November. December, let's make sure we complete that checklist and turn everything else that we might have not submitted thus far, following up with our recommenders, making sure we have all our check boxes marked and scheduling our interview for January. In January, once the new year turns, we'll go through our interviews and our wrap-ups, and then you're done. And by February, that's when your admissions decision will come. Um, and so that's what I hope with is some families like to start early. If you start early, you can work on things each month, right? One thing at a time. Um, and so hopefully that allows it the pace to slow down a little bit and, and, and for it to feel like an easier process. <laughs> yeah. Um, one question I've seen a couple times now um, that I think would be uh, good to just touch base on is placement testing. Yes. Um, what are we doing for that this year? Absolutely. Uh, Faith Lutheran, uh, this year, we really evaluated the purpose and point of our placement testing. Um, here at our school, we look for three things when we accept a student. And I'll be completely transparent. We accept close to over 95% of our applicants here uh, because we are a school that can support a wide range of students. Our, our school's mission statement is everyone prepared, everyone saved. And that word everyone is important to us. Um, and so we can accept a wide range of students. We can support the students 
students that are rocking 4.5 GPAs and we're looking at very selective universities in the future. We can support the student that's in between, that's really just trying to find their feet and look for their place. We can also support that student that maybe struggles in school or maybe has a learning challenge that they're working through. And um, we do offer a resource program here at the school. Um, so because of that, we do accept quite a large portion of our applicants if they apply on time and there's space available in the school. Now with that, we look for three things. We look for first and foremost, um, solid grades in academics, meaning solid grades. I'm not looking for 100% perfect straight A's only. We accept a wide range of students. What we wanna see in the admissions office and the admissions committee wants to see students that are actively working at earning the best grades that they are capable of. Are they turning their homework in on time? Are they completing their homework diligently? Are they participating in class? Are they actively working to study for their tests and quizzes? Um, and so that's what we want to see, right? Uh, the second thing we look for is behavior. And that's almost even more important to us. Is a student a positive um, uh, contributor on their current campus? Do they work well with teachers and their peers? Are they respecting others and maintaining good student boundaries? Um, that is important to us. Um, much of the time if a student is not accepted at school, it's usually because of behavior. Uh, and the third thing is what I touched on earlier was about getting involved. Does the student have a desire and an excitement to want to come to Faith Lutheran and get involved and, and dive into our extracurriculars and all that we have to offer here? Right. And so with that being said, if those three are the criteria, our placement testing that we will do um, at the end of the application process, actually after we receive um, your admissions decision, is truly used for placement in the math classes. Here at Faith Lutheran, we differentiate when it comes to math, especially in the middle school, where a student could actually start in a more advanced math class or a regular math class, or maybe in a math class that help students that maybe struggle in that subject. And so we provide a math placement test to make sure we're placing your student in the correct level. This year, especially with COVID and the pandemic, um, math has been a little all over the place. And so we found that our math placement test has helped us place students in the appropriate placement to start off this current school year. And so that placement test will happen after you receive your admissions decision. And so we will only test students that have been accepted to the school. Um, and then along with the math placement test, our high schoolers will do a reading comprehension test. The middle schoolers will not. Um, and so truly it's used for placement. Um, high school parents might be wondering about placement into honors courses. Um, you'll see when you explore a curriculum guide, placement into honors and AP classes is dependent on the class grade um, and, and not necessarily a placement test. And so um, you can view that on our curriculum guide though. Um, let's see here. And so to wrap that up, truly our admissions decisions will be based on what we see from the report cards, what we see from the recommendation forms, standardized test scores, um, that's truly, and the wrap up interview. That's what we'll base our admissions decision on. Um, and again, we're accepting, you know, over 95% of our applicants if you're applying on time and we're seeing those three things that we talk about. Right, um, we, we truly believe that we can serve a wide range of students here and we want to, um, we're excited to. That was a great question though, Mr. Dwyer. Um, more things, anything else that you think might be helpful? I think we've been covering most of the questions. Um, a couple of the ones that are still outstanding if we've got time to kill and people still paying attention mm -hmm. are again, some of our, our own bragging questions, um, kind of academic standing. What does it mean to be college prep? What mm -hmm. about college placement? Um, mm -hmm. So a little bit more on the high school focus side of things. Absolutely, these are great questions. And uh, not only high school, but I know a lot of middle school families, they wanna see the end result, right? And so our goal is that a student in the middle school is also preparing for that next step, which is high school, which is preparing them for college. So one of the benefits of, of attending Faith Lutheran is the fact that you know that since we're all in the same school, all in the same place, the high school is preparing for college, the middle school students are preparing for high school, the curriculum is aligned to make sure that we're, we're all reaching that same goal. And so ranking in the state of Nevada um, in regards to academics, we're definitely in that top, um, I would say top five in the state. Um, when parents look at us uh, applying to our school, they're also applying to schools like the Meadows, like Bishop Gorman, like the tech schools. Um, and so our students are in that top um, percent there and our school is ranked high. Um, not only are we ranked high, and I know that 
I'm not gonna spout out specific percentages because I don't have them for the updated year, but typically our test scores when we do standardized testing, um, we are uh, well above the national average when it comes to results from those tests. We know that our students are successful in our middle school program because they do well in our high school. And we know that our high school program is successful because then to answer the second question, um, we, our senior class each year, we're typically in the mid to high 90s when it comes to college acceptances uh, percentage wise. Um, we don't make an overarching promise that we're gonna get 100% college acceptances every year because that's not our mission statement, right? I wanna go back to that and the fact that our mission statement is everyone prepared. And so sometimes in that everyone, not all students have the desire to go to college afterwards. And so we're going to support that student. Um, and not all students have a desire to go to a four-year university afterwards. Um, but either way, when I compare our school college acceptances to that of the Meadows, to that of Bishop Gorman, to that of the tech schools in town, we're getting into similar schools, our students that want to get into the selective universities are getting their pick. Um, they're not only getting to one, they're getting to multiple schools. Um, I was just looking at a new graphic that we were putting out today and it'll be live on our website soon once we edit it, but just the new list of all the college matriculation over the past five years. And gosh, is that list amazing. Um, and so I feel quite confident in our college process, you can definitely explore the college counseling website page more for more in-depth information. And on that, I think you get a good snapshot if you um, download our top 25 magazine. Um, but it, it's it's a pretty impressive, um, pretty impressive list. And these students are pretty impressive. Oh, one thing I do want to toot my horn about, Mr. Dwyer, already for this current senior year class, we have had th three perfect scores on the ACT. Uh, with just the senior class alone. So that's pretty exciting. I just, a college counselor just told me that today. So anyway, that's a great question. Um, really? And I've got one that I just flagged here for you as well. Mm -hmm. um, do you have to be Lutheran to attend? This is a great question. Oh my goodness, I should have addressed that. The answer is no. Um, our school, Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School, yes, we are indeed a Christian school. Um, you're gonna see that on our flyers. You're gonna see that in person when you walk around. Um, our faculty and staff, it is a part of the hiring process that we are intentionally hiring Christian individuals to work and teach at our school. On the flip side of that though, we do not make that a requirement to apply to Faith Lutheran. Uh, here at Faith Lutheran, you will not need to be a member or be, uh, I, you know, affiliated with a church uh, or a religious organization to apply. We accept students from all religious backgrounds and walks of life. Um, we do not require for you to sign a statement of faith uh, when you are accepted to the school. The school is open to all. I think the thing to understand is that you want to know what you're getting yourself into, right? Uh, we're going to be unapologetically a Christian school. Your students will see, hear, and learn about Jesus and what Christians believe on a daily basis. However, it's never going to feel like, oh, you have to believe this or else. Um, we really take the approach of inviting students where if it's a new topic for them, we wanna invite them to learn, well, what do Christians believe and why? And how, do, how does that play out, right? And, and if a student is coming from a Christian background or a faith background, and it feels familiar, they're gonna to get to learn and grow deeper in their faith. If it's something new for a student, that's okay too. Um, my husband's one of the theology teachers and he loves answering and getting questions from students where Christianity or religion or faith is not a background for them uh, in their household. And that's okay. Uh, the two things that we require for students that attend the school, all students will take one um, faith class, uh, a theology class, learning about Christianity and the Bible. Um, each year they attend the school. And that's similar to, for example, for Faith Lutheran, uh, Bishop Gorman, Adelson, we all have religious classes that your students will take during the school year. Um, one, one class each year, pardon me. Uh, the other requirement is our once a week um, worship service or chapel. And again, for a student where it's a part of their life, they're gonna be able to worship together and grow deeper in their faith. For a student that's a little newer to them, once a week, they'll be introduced again to what Christians believe and why, and be able to spend that time learning about that once a week. Um, but outside of that, we do not require church membership. We do not require families to, um, again, like adhere you know, to any sort of religious, um, you know, statements, but um, we are open to all. And so I hope that answers the question. Ultimately, I hope families feel comfortable applying from whatever background you are. We, we get families from across the board and um, I have students from all different backgrounds and they, they feel comfortable here at the school. Yeah.
How do I submit multiple applications? I just saw that one pop up. I should answer that, shouldn't I? Yes. So, <laughs> I had a great family ask, how do I submit multiple applications for multiple children? Um, the key to that is start with one. And once you've created your application portal, you'll be able to add additional kids to that. And so when you create the username and password, start with one student information, fill out that application, submit it. And once you have access to your portal and a checklist, you can add the other students on and start their applications as well. I, I'm sorry, there's not an easier way to do that, but it is actually easier once you have your portal set up. So start with one child and after that's been processed by our office, we've set up your portal, we've given you a checklist, you'll be able to add your additional siblings on there. Yeah, great question. Oh, Mary, you found out where to click. Good job. <laughs> All right, Mr. Dyer, I'll say we are reaching the hour mark here. And so I think I want to wrap up um, and just close our night by saying thank you to our 40, 50 plus families here that joined us tonight. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. This is not the end. This is just the start of our journey. Um, I think as Mr. Dwyer and I kind of assess if we find that more families are needing assistance, we might do more webinars throughout the fall. And so please check back frequently to our school website and our the admissions pages for new events that are posted and upcoming events. But um, the one that's I think closest to our feet is September 25th, Explore Faith, our first mini open house. That is not this Saturday, but next Saturday, September 25th. And so if you go to our website, you'll be able to see the ability to sign up and register for that event to let us know you're coming. And um, you'll be able to get more information about that there. And so I hope to connect with all these families soon. Um, we'll see you at our events. Mr. Dyer, anything else to close? No, there's just a couple of little questions here that I'm answering more on a personal level on uh, the Q&A. So I'm going to continue to do that. Um, but that is uh, about it. I've got, thank you guys in advance. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to get to know you guys, get to know your students a little bit better. Uh, we really enjoyed this process. Um, and so it's a lot of fun for us to get to know all of these new students, um, get to know all of your stories. So we really enjoy all of these aspects and all these things that we ask you guys to complete. Um, so thank you for opening up your family and your homes to us. Absolutely. Well, here's the deal. Mr. Dyer and I will stay on here just for a few minutes here, just in case there are more questions. But please, I'm going to put in our chat box our admissions uh, email. Um, and if there are questions that you do not feel maybe comfortable asking over our chat, um, if you maybe want to ask more privately, please send us an email here at admissions at flhsemail.org. And we'd be happy, happy, happy to, uh, to answer them for you. Yeah, Mr. Rye, the reason why I'm kind of stalling here is because as soon as I close this webinar, your chat boxes will close. Um, and so, yeah. And That's then, what I figured. I'm, I'm trying to get to the last couple quickly and we should be all set, but thank you guys all. Oh, man. And obviously, I'm sure for those viewing, Mr. Dwyer and I are at home tonight. And so you see me, <laughs> you might see a plug here. Anyway, we are really excited to work with your families this year. This is our highlight this is the fun part of our job is connecting with your families oh you're welcome elizabeth thank you for joining us thank you susan for joining us um i'm so excited to work with your families so be great parents i will say that are still with us um if you want me to come to your school if you want mr dwyer to come to your school and speak with your um students to speak with your teachers to speak with other parents or if you have um, a, a baseball group, if you have a, a um, you know, I don't know, a music class, we would love to come to you. And so we are always open to doing information sessions away from campus at your schools. And so again, reach out to our office, reach out to your school administrator and, and request for us to be there. We'd love to, to meet you on your turf as well. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I hope we all see you. September 25th for Explore Faith. Awesome. Have I a think that's everything. Day, everybody. Thank you for Thanks, everyone. Us. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>